a huge thanks to all of you for joining me on this webinar chat, Beyond Selfie Stick Tourism, tips on how you can travel deeper. So by the end of this talk, you'll know a little bit more about me, what experience experiential travel even is. Try to say that five times fast, by the way, I've been reciting it for days now. How you can incorporate it into your travels abroad, how you can incorporate it into your life at home, where to find the weird and the wonderful, helpful resources for digging deeper, and of course, where to follow me for more, because this is what I write about all the time. I'm very passionate about it. So about me, <clears throat> my name is Jordan Campbell. I'm the travel blogger behind globaldebauchery.com. I'm actually a TCK, a third culture kid. So that's somebody who grew up in neither the country of their nationality or countries of their parents' nationalities. I'm now based in DC. And I've been here for over a decade, which feels really weird to somebody who has moved their entire life every three years on rotate. Uh, I'm a flash packing road tripper. I love off the beaten path misadventures. Dark tourism is totally my jam. Uh, a lot of people ask me what flash packing is too, by the way, and it's basically backpacking with hotels. <laughs> so bougie backpacking. Uh, at this point, I visited 52 countries in all 50 states, and I always like to have drink in hand, hence global debauchery. Uh, you might know me from a couple of places by now. I'm kind of making my rounds. Uh, I was on the travel adventure show talking about road tripping. Uh, I'm part of the women's travel group Wonderful, where I'm actually the DC chapter director now. And I did a recent IG takeover with the Nomadic Network. Uh, you can follow me at Global Debauchery on all of the major social channels. Um, you can also subscribe to the newsletter on my blog. I have lots of travel inspo coming through and travel discounts. That's the big thing that I always look out for too. But above all, I love to help people travel deeper. This is my, I live to help people travel deeper. This is my passion. So life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. I really believe as much as it gives me panic attacks sometime in doing one thing that scares you every single trip. Uh, and you can see exhibit A. Here's me diving into a shark tank in North Shore, Hawaii. And of course I have my arms out of the cage um, as one does like an idiot. But you know what? I survived and it's a once in a lifetime experience that I can say I did that. And one of the main places you can do it is in North Shore, Hawaii. So I do have a couple of my favorite travel highlights just to get some ideas generating here. Um, my husband and I went to Iceland this summer. We hiked a live volcano with still smoking lava. Uh, we snorkeled between two tectonic plates, the only place in the world that you can do this, swimming with sharks. We went to Chile's Atacama Altiplano, which is high altitude lagoons, uh, 13K feet up, and got stuck in a llama traffic jam. You can see my photo here. Might have been one of the most hilarious things. Uh, I explored the Azupis district, the arts district in Vilnius, which is a really cool sort of art commune area. Actually with my dad, who I saw pop in somewhere here. Thanks, dad. Hi. <laughs> um, day drinking on Hong Kong's Lama Island, global debauchery to the fullest. We toured the inside of the DMZ. It's a whole region, but in order to get in there, you have to pass over your passport and like you don't get it back until you leave. It is kind of frightening. Uh, in New Zealand once, we had a really angry mountain parrot rip all the rubber stripping off of our rental car. The locals called them cheeky. I was like, that's not cheeky, that's just angry. Uh, and another once in a lifetime experience, I went on an uninhabited island in the Galapagos Islands and sunbathed with penguins, sea lions, and marine iguanas, literally just swimming and circling around. Literally just one of the best travel memories I have. It was so special. <clears throat> so a couple of things for your consideration, and let me actually see, yeah, I can move this. So just before we get started, immersive travel is really on the rise. So despite COVID, Atlas Obscura actually had the best year ever for experiences this past year. There's a couple of pre-COVID stats in here, but it still shows the trends. So 2018 Airbnb experiences increased nearly seven times year over year. Average host earned 2.5K, top hosts earned over 300K in 2018. This last year, TripAdvisor reported uh, more than 67% in travelers booking outdoor activities, cooking and painting increased 61%. Y'all remember when everybody was making bread, you know, the whole thing. Food tours went up 45%. 
Nonprofits raised almost 4 million via social impact experiences. And Globetrenders, uh, one of my favorite places to just follow and see what's up and coming too. They reported a rise in what they call upskilling escapes the last two years. Um, and upscaling is, or upskilling is almost doubling down on immersive travel. It's basically where you travel to somewhere for several weeks specifically to learn a craft. A lot of these crafts are very, um, have deep in cultural roots, very traditional, and they're dying crafts. And so people go on sort of ancestral tours to go learn these crafts and keep the traditions alive. Overall, the experience economy, as they're calling it, spending is expected to be over eight trillion in just seven years. So this is definitely the direction that a lot of travel is going on. And I'm here to tell you, you guys need to start today and get there before all the crowds do. Um, Overall, it's my personal belief that experiential travel, really, it helps combat over tourism. It gets you out of all those major areas and crowds. It's a way to support local small businesses. And it is arguably, in my opinion, a more ethical way to travel. So here's a couple of ideas or opinions about what experiential, experiential travel isn't or really what it doesn't have to be. It can be some of these things, there might be some overlap, but it doesn't have to be slow travel. You don't need to spend two weeks in one place to say you've really gotten to know it. Uh, it doesn't have to be Instagrammable, though it might be. It doesn't have to be dangerous. Like you don't have to go diving into a shark cage if you don't want to. A lot of people think, you know, and it's true too, the best way to experience a place is about the food, but it doesn't have to be all about the food. <clears throat> So here are some ideas of what it is, what it's really about, what it could be, what you could make it. It is really about finding those once in a lifetime experiences wherever you're traveling. It's about challenging yourself, you know, maybe even having a transformative experience. It's about really getting to know the people in the culture and really immersing yourself in it. And most of all, it is about creating memories, not collecting things. So one of my favorite all-time poems ever, shout out to my dad too, because it was his favorite. Uh, Two roads diverged in a wooden eye. I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. So this is just really an overview and really simplifying what experiential travel is. But I, I did my best. I was actually just talking about this earlier before, Erica. You know, the idea of immersive and experiential travel is very conceptual in many ways, and it's really hard to pin down. But here are just some ideas. These are the headliners. And the real question you should ask yourself is how we can get you out there. What is it that speaks to your heart, your soul? What is it that interests you most? Just as a, an example, you know, I'm not a huge foodie. I'll try anything just about once. But I really, you know, the arts for me is where it's at, the local art scene. <clears throat> and that sort of by definition takes you off the beaten path in most places because arts are always in up and coming, you know, I don't know, a warehouse somewhere on the far side of town. <laughs> so you go in some pretty adventurous places you might not otherwise go. But here are the headliners, cultural tours, adventure excursions, and culinary outings, right? Those are my three major buckets. Now, you might look at those and think to yourself, okay, a cultural tour means going to a museum, boring. Adventure excursions means going zip lining somewhere. A culinary outing is getting that, you know, premium restaurant reservation that you were looking for. And I'm here to say too, there's nothing wrong with any of these kinds of to-dos, right? Like you, everybody should see the Louvre. Everybody should see the Louvre. You know, um, everybody should taste that food or get into that restaurant if they can. And zip lining is fun as, all get out. So, you know, by all means, absolutely do it. But here's the difference between these and experiences. They're really just things to do. Here are some examples of experiences. Cultural tours. Do a local street art tour. Get to know a local vendor. I actually went to, um, earlier this year, it was the best thing ever. I went to go save puppies <laughs> through a local animal shelter. They flew me to San Juan, Puerto Rico, just to fly puppies back. And I was there for a week. And little did I know in downtown San Juan, there's a little working barrio, working class barrio called San Torsa that has over 2000 murals within just a span of a few blocks. I mean, that is so impressive. And it was such a great way just to wander through and get to know the city. Adventure excursions, 
maybe a hot air balloon ride in Albuquerque. You know, that's one of the big things they do in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And you can't just like, I can't go into downtown DC where I'm based and be like, oh, I want to ride in a hot air balloon. It doesn't really work that way. But I can in Albuquerque. That's the point. Culinary outings. Okay, when you're in Bologna, Italy, yes, eat all the pasta, eat all the pasta, but maybe also sign up for a tortellini making class, uh, you know, get to know the little lady with her table outside that's like putting the pasta together and get to know her, ask about her craft, ask about her family, ask about the city of Bologna, get some inside tips. So I really, really encourage everyone just even looking at traveling and, you know, excursions from that perspective, instead of choosing to merely exist, I, I urge you to go experience life. I urge you to dig deep. I urge you to live. <clears throat> okay, so you guys are like, yeah, yeah, I got like the, the wheels are turning, got this, no problem. How do I actually incorporate experiential travel on the road? So here are a couple of questions to ask yourself and then maybe some additional points to give you some more ideas on how to look for these things. What is something your destination is particularly well known for? So this may or may not be off the beaten path. It could be something that you just have to do. But as an example, in Iceland, you know, everybody knows about the Blue Lagoon and the Golden Circle. But my husband and I found the Silver Fisher where we went snorkeling in dry suits in between two tectonic plates. Um, you know, and not everybody's doing that when they're going to Iceland. Uh, something that your destination offers that you haven't done before. I just got back from Turks and Caicos. <laughs> I'm always on the road. I can't even, like, where am I today? I don't know. <clears throat> uh, we recently went to Turks and Caicos, which in and of itself is not really off the beaten path, right? And we signed up for SUP boarding, uh, stand up paddle boarding, which also is in and of itself not off the beaten path. But what we did is we paired that with an eco tour. So we actually got to go out to the far end of an island and we went sup boarding and we learned all about the mangrove ecosystem. We boarded with turtles and baby sharks and held live conches and urchins. You know, this is something you can go sup boarding anywhere, but I don't know that you can like see the baby sharks and, you know, swim with turtles just anywhere while you're sup boarding. But Turks and Caicos had this offer. Ask yourself too, what's something you can only do in this one place and go do that. Uh, a big thing that my husband and I like to do is research regions and towns sort of around a base of operations. Um, and you can go further out, but here's two quick examples. I'll use Italy again. Um, if anyone's been to Florence, have you been to Fiesole? So this is a little town just on the outskirts of town that has archeological digs and you can actually it offers one of the best views of the city of Florence. I think a lot of people don't know how to get up there, um, but if you look into it, they have buses that run regularly and you can do a whole day trip just there. And it really is away from the crowds. Um, another example is, you know, my husband and I were training Italy and literally did a pit stop. There's between Milan and Venice, you know, two major tourist areas. There's a little town called Verona there. Um, Verona is actually known for having Juliet's balcony <laughs> and everybody rubs the statue's breast, but, um, <laughs> but we actually really fell in love with the town Verona. Uh, it's so tiny. And now we recommend it to everybody who's going to be there. Like you have to make this specific stop, get on the ground, travel the way the locals travel, travel in a way that allows for in-between sites. Now traveling the way the locals travel. I love taking the Metro. I love people watching. Um, and, you know, my husband sometimes wants to kill me because I chat with everybody always, um, wherever I go, <laughs> if I've had a drink or two, I'm going to be making friends wherever I am. Um, the thing I really love about training and road tripping is that it allows for these in-between sites. So you're not simply going, you know, taking a bus with a tour group from point A to point B you know, you get to be on the ground, you get to stop wherever you want, you get to go out and explore and take a look around. Um, I would encourage you to join day tours and not just a whole tour. Whole tours are really great because, you know, they really take the guesswork out of a lot of stuff. You can be with a group, you can feel their safety in numbers, um, you can meet people if you're a solo traveler. So there's a lot of really good things about doing whole tours, but a lot of time they're just going to do the high level things. I would say sort of curate your trip more to you and your interests and to digging deeper. So maybe go someplace 
find a base of operations, as I like to call it, a base camp, and join a couple of day tours. Uh, <laughs> make friends, ask them for their recommendations. Uh, we've actually met so many friends on the road, people that we talked to about their travels while they were there and what to do and what they've been doing after they've been there a little while. And actually we've made friends so much so on the road that we've gone to go visit them in their hometowns afterwards. And then they have taken us to places that we would not have otherwise known because we just tell them up front, hey, this is what we like to do, take us somewhere really crazy or special. And I have a big challenge for all of you the next time you're out and about traveling. Challenge yourself once, do something that you feel is particularly adventurous. Try that weird food. Also, you know, take that solo trip. If you haven't done a solo trip before, it's really empowering experience. Now, also one of my favorites, how to incorporate experiential travel at home. Um, I like to call these meantime meanderings, and I used to do a whole series on my blog. So if you go check it out, you can actually see a whole bunch of ideas for how to do this. And it was a big sort of pandemic thing for me because I was like, good God, get me out of the house. Like, what does a traveler do when like all travel is shut down for months on end? Um, <clears throat> so one thing is everybody knows about your local national parks, of course. But there are literally hundreds of thousands, I mean, maybe not hundreds of thousands, sorry, hundreds or probably thousands of national park monuments uh, that are all over the place and that really go unnoticed by people. And I'll tell you, the park rangers there don't get a whole lot of visitors. So they are so happy that you have visited and they will tell you everything about it. And you can ask them about them and their lives and really get to know them. Uh, I have a link here that... Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter later, you can actually, you'll actually be receiving this with all the active links. But one of the really dorky things my husband and I like to do is we have a national parks passport and you go around to the parks and the monuments and you get all your stamps. So we've been trying to tick off all the ones in Maryland, DC and Virginia. <laughs> it's like a little personal goal, a personal nerdy goal. Um, you know, the national parks have been really booked up through the pandemic. So explore your state parks. Do not count your state parks out. I just did a road trip cross country with my dad and we stopped at a state park in Louisiana and A, there was hardly anybody there, but it was literally just felt like the Louisiana experience, like whole bayous, you know, weird looking caterpillars, like, all, you know, great stuff to explore. <clears throat> I like to say be in the know of your local area and a good way to do that is to find sort of IG cult following sites, you know, just in DC, we have the example of the Washingtonian Magazine or DC Ist, but you'll find a lot if you're looking for it, if you're just looking hashtag your city or like hashtag, you know, IG your city, you'll find all of these places. These are people that are out and about in town and they're showing off all the latest restaurant openings, all the latest places to be, really cool stuff to do. And they're also touting groups that are into the same thing that you're into. So if you happen to be in the in our nation's capital area, this could be DCIG, DC Spot. Also, a lot of cities have secret, we have secret DC. So there could be secret Chicago, secret Boston. Uh, I recently signed up for my own area's cultural organizational newsletter, and I really felt like almost an idiot that I'd let it go for so long before I did that. <laughs> um, they tell me basically all of the cultural events that are happening. You know, a, a, and a great example of this was, you know, DC has its beloved embassy weekend every single year. And unfortunately, obviously the past year it was paused. It's where everybody can go up and down embassy row. They have food, they have drinks, they have dancing and all different cultures. But what they did that I learned about through this newsletter is they had what they called Passport in the Garden. So they tried to do an outdoor version of that and nobody had even heard about it, um, but I was all about it. Uh, this seems a little counterintuitive, but register for your tourism board's email list, your own city's email list. <laughs> be a tourist in your own city. You might be surprised what they're dishing out and what they're encouraging for you to do. Go to new restaurant and museum openings. So I know I just said in a prior, you know, couple of slides that, just doing that isn't really experiential, but it is in your hometown because you've probably, if you're like me, you've probably already been to 
the the National Mall 20,000 times, the White House, 20, you know, every time somebody, when I lived in Rochester, everybody wanted to go to Niagara Falls. When I lived in Seattle, everybody wanted to go to the Space Needle. So you've done all these things. So new restaurant museum openings are in a way more immersive for you in your town because you've already checked off all the other stuff and make it a point to do that. Be like, you know what, once a month, I'm gonna find something new. Do the local things. I'm kind of embarrassed that as much as I've done so much stuff in DC, I haven't segued DC. And that is the thing that everybody loves to do. And so I'm kind of like, you know what? Maybe I'll just try have a new experience and go segue my own city. Like, why not? I'll probably wreck it because I'm accident prone, but you get the idea. Uh, join in-person travel groups. Obviously, the Nomadic Network is a great one. Wonderful is a great one. There's Travel Massive, the Impact Travel Alliance. Um, you know, you'll meet people that love the same things you do and usually are meeting up at like places you haven't been, just really exploring. Plan day trips, weekend getaways from your home base. When my husband and I first met, which is forever ago at this point, actually our anniversary is coming up and he's probably on this call too. So happy Andy, babe. Uh, plan a day trip. We used to do day dates when we first started dating. So instead of just going to like a movie or going out to dinner, which we also did those things, we went to like Gettysburg for a day. We went out to the coast for a day. It's usually a couple hour drive one way or the other. We've done weekend getaways since then where we've gone out to the woods of West Virginia and like stayed in a cabin. We went and stayed in Cape May, New Jersey, just because we hadn't been there before. Um, we went to Smith Island, which is now one of my favorite places in Maryland. Um, it's a really weird island with an Elizabethan accent, sort of like an Ocracoke Brogue. If you've ever heard the accent on the Carolina coast, it's wild. Uh, micro adventures. I love this concept. So Alastair Humphreys was a National Geographic, uh, was he an explorer, adventurer? He got some big award with National Geographic. <laughs> But he basically created this concept called micro adventures and then did a book and it's on his website for free a year of micro adventures and this is as small as literally doing a whole campsite in your own backyard, you know, if you feel like you can't get away. He challenges you to things like the five to nine trip where people bring their bike to work and then they go out biking go camping for the night and then show up back to work the next day. So these are little itty bitty adventures things that you can just a way of thinking of things differently. He himself hiked the, I think, forget what it is. He's English. I think it's the M5, the loop that goes around London. He actually hiked the M5 and met all these people and stopped at all these pubs along the way and made it like a whole adventure. So it's the, the equivalent of like the DC Beltway or any of the city loops. <clears throat> it's really up to you to do your homework and make it interesting. Like go have fun, like push yourself to try new things. And one of the big ways I do that is by creating a local goal. <laughs> um, I have a couple, you know, one is the, the National Parks Passports. Another one is that I have a goal to sort of see all of the Atlas Obscura sites in the DC area. So think of things that way. And then, you know, you'll actually, and my husband was laughing because I said something about our next Caribbean trip that we go on to this other place. And he's like, we don't have to go to all of them. And I'm like, well, now we do because we've been to so many that now, now it's a requirement that we visit every single, not every single, every Caribbean nation, I'll say. Every single island might be a tough one. Okay, so you've got some ideas, how to find these things, how to find the weird and the wonderful. There's three really easy ways, Google, locals, and simple exploration. And I know this is probably not what you wanted to hear. However, hear me out. Uh, you know, experiential and off the beaten path travel requires more research because by nature, it is not what everybody else is doing. And it is not necessarily going to be for you. It's very personal and you need to find what you connect with. Like, so remember when you're planning all this stuff, if you're not much of a planner, this is the whole point is trying to, you know, really dive in. So yeah, a little research is required. Um, however, I'm here to help. So I'm going to walk you guys through a couple of these. Don't worry, because I will come back to this screen. <clears throat> these are a couple of my favorite resources. Now, I know most of you are probably familiar with a lot of these, but I'm hoping to show you a different way to use some of them as well. 
So I'm just going to outline really fast and I'm going to show you the ways that I use them and then we'll come back here. Google Travel. So maybe everybody knows Google Flights, Google Maps, but Google actually has a whole travel site that you can visit, google.com backslash travel or just travel.google.com. It actually offers a little explore page, things to do, and then you have flights and maps as well. Atlas Obscura is one of my favorites. It's sort of the, the pinnacle of the weird and the wonderful things to do. And there's a couple of features I love on there. Viator, it's basically an excursion booking site. <clears throat> uh, there are a few of these. I just prefer Viator. I've always had great experiences. They have in-person and online. Airbnb off now offers experiences specifically. Rome to Rio gets you from point A to point B. So like I was talking about, you know, different routes and different ways you can get between two points if you want to stop in between. TripAdvisor, one of my all-time favorites, obviously for recommendations, but also for travel forums. When you are researching off the beaten path stuff, it's really hard to get answers sometimes. <clears throat> so go to a TripAdvisor form. You know, there's a high likelihood that your question has already been answered by somebody along the way, but also, you know, people are really responsible responsive there, I found. Like, I literally had people helping me translate Bulgarian private bus schedules on there. Like, that's how effective it is. Um, Kayak, you know, is a really great site. It's, for me, my favorite to check out travel restrictions right now. You think you can't travel? There's actually a lot of options open. I advocate for responsible travel. I will say that. Uh, my side, of course, Global Debauchery, I write about a lot of second cities, that's my jam, I write about a lot of off the beaten path opportunities, and then of course travel groups, again, Nomadic Network and Wonderful. So let's see if I can check out of this and show you guys how I'm using some of these. <clears throat> All right. So this is actually Google travel, again, google.com backslash travel. And you can see, you can search for your area, but over here we have actual travel. We've got explore, which literally takes you to a map and you can zoom in on all these places and it'll give you photos. I mean, the whole experience, it's Google, y'all. Things to do. So this is one of my favorite things that I think a lot of people actually don't know about. So things to do, and we're just gonna go ahead and type something in. So this is gonna outline all of your top sites, right? You can even see it on the map over here, which I love, but to get a little more off the beaten path, just keep scrolling, you know, scroll past all the usual stuff that everyone else is doing. And you're gonna see some stuff that you probably haven't done before. You know, Meridian Hill Park in DC. I haven't been there, didn't even know it existed. Eastern Market is a local favorite. <clears throat> So you can use this in this way to, you know, start scrolling down and finding some of the lesser known off the beaten path things. Uh, let's see. Also, believe it or not, one of my all time faves is simply Google Maps. I could spend forever and ever just panning around on maps of the local area, but you know, the more that you zoom in, the more it outlines stuff that you could do. <clears throat> So I haven't been to McLean Gardens. So definitely use that to your advantage. Here's Atlas Obscura. Uh, and up here you can see trips, experiences, courses. They've also outlined it here. Experiences is the big one. One of my favorite features, of course, is the map. And this is kind of what I do. It's right here. So sort of what I do when I'm looking for a weird thing to do and I happen to be in this other neighborhood. Viator, again, uh, you can book your day trips through here. You can book whole, th whole trips through here, but I prefer the day trips. You can even book transfers through here. Sometimes they have online stuff. If you sign up for their email list, they do send you good deals. Airbnb, everybody's familiar with that. However, now they have up here, as you can see, experiences and online experiences. I actually have some friends with close to, actually Brian Sizzioni is gonna be speaking at Nomadic Network in just a couple of days about um, Brooklyn food, but he does Airbnb experiences. <clears throat> he gives people like local rock and roll, rock and roll tours of Brooklyn and like a Goodfellas tour. Um, and also my girl, Annie on here of Nibbles and Giggles DC has lunch with a local as one of the experiences. So people from out of town can come meet up for lunch with somebody, just chat and sort of dish out all the great, great things to do in our city. Room to Rio, 
let me show you this really quick. I'm just going to do this as an example. So it lists here all the different ways to get from point A to point B, night bus, drive, train. So this is how you can stop and see what the routes might be. And you can sort of dive in and maybe even look at Google image some of these little towns there and just see if they float your boat. <clears throat> TripAdvisor, uh, the travel forums is over here. It's not that, not that obvious, but obviously I use it a ton for reviews, but travel forums is where it's at. And Kayak, one of my favorites recently, kayak.com backslash travel hyphen restrictions. It has sort of everything you need to figure out where you're going. You pick where you're from, you keep scrolling down. You can pick just an example, your destination region. And then you can pick these qualifiers uh, where vaccinated travelers can visit, countries with open borders, yada, yada, yada. But one of the things I really like too is that it shows, for example, Caribbean Netherlands. It shows what percentage of the population has been vaxxed too. So you can rest easy when you're there. Feel comfortable and feel you know more ethical if folks are having, I know it's been a big issue. You're like, is it okay to travel right now to other countries? You know, that lets you know how well they're doing and all of that good stuff. Nomadic network, as always. Woo! Oh, look, there's me. And there's Brian <laughs> on the 10th. And Wonderful. It's a women's travel group. I'm really heavily involved in Wonderful as well. And it has really um, gotten me together with some great ladies who are all travelers. You know, I am sure. I, well, I'd like to think, I won't say I'm sure. I would say I'd like to think I could show up in just about any city in the US and a lot internationally. And I feel like these ladies, you know, were already best friends just virtually and they would have me over in an instant. And of course, my website, Global Debauchery, you can sign up in the pop-up in the right corner uh, and you can get travel discounts there. You can get new posts there. And if you don't get pop-ups, there's also, you can subscribe in the right-hand newsletter or in the right-hand column right there. So let me move this back up. All right. So again, here's that full listing of travel resources. And if you sign up, I will send it to you. If you sign up within, by the end of Sunday, <clears throat> you can have, all of this and have all of these direct links. And with that, let's be friends. Uh, here is my the listing for all of the places that I am online, including my actual blog today. So again, sign up to the blog newsletter and you will get $100 off your next hotel stay when you do for your next immersive travel trip. And I can also offer you $50 off of an annual wonderful membership forever, meaning every year you'll get $50 off with promo code Washington DC, all caps, no space. Um, they actually also offer, you should know, a seven day free trial right now. So you can test it out and you know see if it works for you and uh, go ahead and sign up if you do, if you like it. And now, Hopefully I'm not over time. It's question time. And before we dig into the questions, I just wanted to say thank you all for attending so much, just in case people drop off. Want to make sure I say a big thank you. Jordan, I feel like I screenshotted almost every aspect of this whole presentation for my own uh, going back and researching before I travel again. This was amazing. Such Excellent. good tips. Such good tips. Love the walkthrough. Love that you brought up a bunch of different websites that we could use. Just very valuable tips. Um, we didn't have a ton of questions come through. I feel like you thoroughly explained so much, <laughs> but uh, I would love to just touch on a few of the things that you were uh, speaking about and have you go a little bit deeper no pun intended. Um, one of the things that I would love for you to share about, because I feel like it's such an underutilized resource, is Atlas Obscura, because they are so incredible. And so if you could share a little bit more, um, just for people that maybe haven't heard of them or haven't used them before, like, what kind of gems could you find on Atlas Obscura? And just, you know, yeah. Okay, so there are some weird ones. There might be, I mean, if you went 
onto Atlas. So I've always thought, because in my brain and in my perspective, I use it all. I'm obsessed with that site. It's kind of funny because I always get the pop-up, like get our book. And I'm like, I already have it, you know, <laughs> like, so I'm obsessed with it, but I do run into a lot of people who are not familiar with it. Um, I bet if you put your hometown in it, wherever it is, you're going to find some real weird things, weird and fun in a good way. Um, like if I go in and put Maryland in, there's literally the Blair Witch setting the house like it actually exists it's a place in Maryland that you can go and hike out to and I'm like I don't know if I want to but you know it's on the list so I gotta go right because it's one of my goals um there's also literally just a couple of blocks away from me somebody who has basically created like and it made their entire house and yard and all of their cars sculptures like arts so yeah it's very like a collage experience and it's only a few blocks away and I don't know until like a year or two ago that I even knew it existed. And I'm like, I want to go meet that person and get inside their head. But it's also where we learned about, just an example, we road tripped um, through the Midwest during the pandemic and we went through Nebraska. There are some wild things out there, you know, that you may not know have existed. And we had the best time in Western Nebraska. They have like um, a Stonehenge, but it's made with cars like out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but it was really cool. It was fun to photograph and yeah. And there's definitely some uh, interesting folks to, to get to know out that way. Just adds to the experience, good stories. That is something I've never heard about in my entire life. A Stonehenge made out of cars. Like that's what I'm, yeah. That's what I love Atlas Obscura for. I also, similar to you, like love to look up where I'm living and see what shows up for Atlas Obscura because there are places that are like right next door that you have no clue have some sort of weird significance or cultural um, history to them. Uh, and I love that for Atlas Obscura. Okay, quite a few questions came in when I accused this community of not having any questions. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Some simple ones. Uh, can you just share uh, if people go onto your website, where can they sign up for the newsletter? I believe to the right. Is, oh, am I yes, me? there will be. Yeah. Let me see. I'm still screen sharing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me exit out. So there will be, if you go to globaldebauchery.com, you will get a pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner, but also if you do not get pop-ups or if you accidentally close it out and the cookies hold, of course, You'll find it right in the, I'm pointing, I'm pointing to it like you guys can see where I'm pointing. You'll find it in the right-hand sidebar if you scroll down a little bit. It says subscribe to the newsletter, get fun travel discounts. Perfect. My little, my little map and intro. Wonderful. And you said by sun, if everyone signs up by Sunday, they'll get a copy of this and all of those discounts, right? Yep. You'll get, you'll automatically get the discount for the hotel stay. And then I will be um, reaching out to everyone personally to share this presentation. And the wonderful isn't necessarily uh, included, but it is, let me pull up the promo code again, just in case anyone is interested. Oh. Arr. There we go. So the wonderful promo code, and that's the seven day free trial that you get and then $50 off with that promo code. Perfect. And then we have a question about IG, um, which is Instagram and just how you would go about using Instagram to do a little bit more research. I know you talked about um, going to IG cult following sites, but can you just break that down a little bit? Um, when it comes to hashtags or finding places like that? Sure, absolutely. So one way, um, you can actually just Google sort of what popular local Instagram hashtags are for your site and you can follow those. You can also, once you start Googling, like if you, or sorry, once you start searching in Instagram hashtag Washington DC, you'll see a whole bunch pull up and how many followers they have. And it'll lead you to things like most, major cities have IG, whatever their city name is, and you can follow that. And really it sort of begins to become an avalanche. The more you follow those, the more pop up, the more you see um, new people in new places, um, you know, and people sharing stories and things like that. So, and then you start to follow them as well. But, you know, I might start just to 
start a little bit um, at a higher level, you could start just by following like your local um, magazines that you might have and your local papers. Um, start there and in all likelihood, you'll probably see influencers and bloggers and things like that pop up in their feeds as well. That's a really good idea. And a great segue to Sam's question, which is what's the DC cultural newsletter that you mentioned earlier? Ooh, that is, it is the cultural communique. I think if you just Google cultural tourism DC, it's the actual cultural tourism office. And I, I signed up for that and I get it like once a week, it's not obnoxious, but it tells me about all the, all the goings on, going, going on, goings on. <laughs> goings on, I think. <laughs> Um, okay, so Kelly is asking, do you have any tips on finding indigenous travel guides? I went to Australia a few years ago and couldn't find anything run or hosted by Aboriginal people. Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like that's where I might go talk to the locals. Um, and, you know, I think that one would require a more personal touch, to be honest. Um, if you're going that deep, you know, definitely arrive, talk to the locals, be, you know, be sensitive and see if they can put anyone in touch. In most of my travels, like I'm really, I'm a total talker, but like in most of my travels, you know, people are always willing to help. I, I don't know why I'm surprised by this still, but I'm still surprised by how much people are always willing to help if you just ask. Um, I will say, and I meant to mention too, some of my favorite travel guides for these reasons so obviously everyone knows Lonely Planet, but I will say they are very in depth actually. Like if you get into their guides, it's really in depth. Um, moon guides are specifically known for being off the beaten path. And one of my all time favorites are DK Eyewitness. And it's because, <laughs> you can laugh. it's because there's pictures, but, um, but it lets you know like what you're gonna see. They, but they also offer these illustrated walking tours. So that's of like smaller areas of a city too. So I do use those walking tours and I prefer, you know, walking around a city just to really, you know, if something strikes my interest, I'll just be like, oh, let's go over there. Let's go over there. Yeah, that is amazing. And also I'm reading through the comments and Sam actually uh, suggested, I'm going to butcher this name, Narlegia Tours, which is an Aboriginal owned and run tour company in Australia. So that's what you're talking about when you're talking about joining groups like this, because one person has a question and another person has an answer. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah. And then we have a question from Karen, which I feel like is a question that we get a lot and it's on so many people's minds. Um, she says, I'm nervous to go off the beaten path when traveling solo, particularly as a woman, um, particularly in countries where she doesn't speak the language. So do you have any tips for over overcoming this fear and hesitancy? So I have battled the same thing myself um, on some solo trips. Like obviously the U.S. is fine most of the time. I feel totally fine. Um, I have actually connected with other women um, to do tours specifically just so I can be in good company. Uh, Viator, I read the reviews a lot. Of, most of the times it'll be small groups, which is really great. And you'll have English speakers with you. And again, that goes back to the day tours. Um, I have had a couple of whoppers like that were like busloads of people that were just not my thing, but the vast majority of my tours with them have been like very small groups. <clears throat> and, you know, and I felt safe and I felt it was a small enough group that you can ask the kinds of questions you wanna ask. Um, and Viator is another one of those that, you know, at the very top, for example, Turks and Caicos, you're gonna have snorkeling, going on a catamaran for a day, like all the things like the sunset cruise, the champagne. But if you continue just to dive deeper, you're going to see things like our eco tour, like going kayaking through glow worms a couple of days after um, a full moon, you know, these, and you can't go, you can't do that everywhere, but you can do it there. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that gives some, some helpful suggestions. I've also mm -hmm. battled like if I'm being like, if I'm scared for no reason, or if, or if I'm, you know, if my instincts are dead on, I've also battled some of that. Like, am I just worried because I'm in a new place that I'm not familiar with, or am I just being ridiculous? And, you know, my head is working overtime. I've done some of that also. 
Yeah, it's a fine line. Um, I think that what you're pointing to also is the fact that what you're what you've shared so far in this presentation, which is incredible, is how to travel deeper. But also sometimes you need to travel on the surface in order to then travel deeper. Right. So maybe you need to go to the Louvre, make some friends at the Louvre and then go into those deeper experiences. Um, and not everything has to be the most epic shark dive of your life. Right. No, it does. It does. Like I said earlier, you don't have to be trekking in my mind. Anyways, I don't need to go on. I would like to, but there's no way in my physical current physical condition that I'm going and trekking about Kilimanjaro. You know, I don't think it has to be that crazy or that expensive to be able to do some of these things. And I do think I am an advocate. Like I do think everybody should see the Eiffel Tower. I do think you should go to the Louvre. I do think you should do those things. But I think that you should really incorporate more and go beyond that. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, I've given some ideas on, you know, where to find that information, how to do that, and maybe just how to look at travel just a little bit differently to build some of that in. For sure. Well, Jordan, this has been an incredible hour. Thank you so, so much for coming and sharing all of this knowledge. I hope you guys took copious notes. And if you didn't, don't worry, because you'll be able to get this presentation. Just, you know, sign up for Jordan's email list on Global Debauchery and be sure to connect with her. And I'm sure Jordan would be happy to answer whatever specific questions you have if you want to send her an email or any of these uh beautiful ways to connect with her. She's looking for more friends and I'm sure in more places because maybe she'll visit you one day. Um, and if you're in DC, connect with me too. Perfect. We'll go explore uh, some off the beaten path, weird stuff to do together. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love